Recent studies show that 31% of U.S. adults have some sort of neck or back condition that causes them pain. If you're one of many Americans that have resigned themselves to neck and back pain, considering surgery to relieve your discomfort may be a better option. After reviewing your medical history and test results with your physician, you may be considered for artificial disc replacement. Please join TGMC as we share information to help you understand one of our treatment options known as Brian's Cervical Disc System. Joining us tonight is Dr. Chris Sinak, Jr. Okay, with that introduction, uh, welcome to the, to the program, uh, Doctor. Good to see you. Good evening. How are you, sir? Uh, doing fine. And of course, uh, as an orthopedic surgeon, I mean, uh, generally, you know, people understand, I think, uh, joints and bones. But uh, from your pr perspective, I guess, let's start maybe a little bit with the anatomy of the spine. And if you can tell us, you know, the parts of the spine which you deal with, uh, I guess, routinely, Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Well, uh, myself, I'm an orthopedic spine surgeon, so I, I uh, fair, uh, pretty much restrict my practice to, to injuries or treatments or, or ailments of the, of the spine. Particularly tonight, we're talking about the cervical spine okay. or the neck. All right. In the cervical spine, um, there are bones which are separated by disc. And in my clinic every day, I always uh, say Oreo cookies yeah. because everyone understands what that looks like. Sure. You have a, a, a bone, a disc, and another bone. I have a model here showing. Sure. Let's see if we can zoom in. Yeah, I think that would be great. I can see that right there. Showing the cervical spine. And this has some of the discs that are removed. But the cervical spine, or your neck, as you know, moves. And right. those discs allow some of that movement. The, the spinal cord uh, lies behind the, the disc. And uh, at each level, the nerve roots come out uh, from behind the bones and the disc. All right, very good. Uh, and, and of course, uh, I guess that gives you a general, I mean, a very brief overview. I know it's a lot more intricate than that, sure. uh, you know, with sure. all the things that you do. But uh, the spine itself, it, it's, it's divided into two separate regions? Oh, three, really. Uh, okay. The, the cervical spine, which is the neck uh, we spoke about, uh, the thoracic spine in the center of the chest where the ribs are, and then the lower spine uh, we call the lumbar spine. Right. Okay, very much. And I guess a little further down, uh, the, the sacrum. Uh, Correct. Uh, dealing with the tailbone. Correct. Uh, but let me, let me just ask you, focusing on the, on the cervical spine, uh, tell us more, I guess, um, in particular about that section of the spine. Well, this section of the spine is uh, a little bit unique in that it, uh, again, it houses the, the true spinal cord and not, and not the small nerve roots that the lumbar spine houses. The cervical spine is unique in that um, approximately 50% of the motion comes from the skull and C1 and C1 and C2. So a lot of your up and down and side to side motion is encompassed by uh, zero being the skull to C2. Mm -hmm. The other uh, remaining segment, C3 to C7, is the other 50% of motion. And routinely, uh, most people wear in their neck or have trouble um, in the lower cervical spine from C3, which is uh, approximately the top of the neck, down to the base of the neck and shoulders to C7. So most of the times when we're operating on people for routine conditions, um, and those conditions would be herniated disc, which is when the Oreo cream or a uh, piece of that cream pushes on a nerve root or the spinal cord, or uh, if the cream or bone spurs protrude onto the spinal cord, and that causes a condition called myelopathy, which is spinal cord compression. Radiculopathy causes nerve root compression off the side. And those uh, occur usually from C3 to C7, and the treatments uh, that we're here to talk about tonight uh, target uh, the vast majority of the problems that lie in that region. Okay, very good. Uh, and this is a question, I guess, that interests me as uh, nearly 59 years old, <laughs> disc degeneration. Sure. Tell us a about that. Disc degeneration is the slow and normal aging process that occurs in everyone. Uh, Discs are comprised of a, a gel-like substance that's filled with water. And over time, that uh, gel-like substance uh, loses uh, its elasticity, and the water uh, uh, is slowly um, sifted away. And as a result, the disc compresses and collapses. 
So if someone says they have disc, uh, degenerative disc disease, excuse me, that is aging. So younger people don't have much of it and older people have a lot of it. And it's a continuum. And it's not a problem unless the degenerated disc uh, can cause pain or nerve root impingement. And if it does, that's when we need to address specifically degenerative disc disease. Okay, and, and is that what results, I guess, from degenerative disc disease, or are there other things that result from it? If you have a traumatic incident in your neck and mm -hmm. herniated disc, or if you have a fracture, or if you have bone spurs, uh, et cetera, all those things can cause spinal cord or nerve root compression. Degenerative disc disease is the natural cascade of aging uh, that occurs in everyone, some people faster than others. Okay, and generally speaking, I mean, what, what surgical options are there involving uh, the, the cervical spine? Realistically, in the cervical spine, we, we have two main operations we do. One of them being from the front, um, and that is called a cervical fusion. And in that operation, we would make an incision in the front of the neck, we would dissect through the neck to the front of the spine, and I'll use the model to show. Okay. If, if I'm sitting here today looking at you, this is the, the front of the spine. Right. So we would operate through the neck into, uh, into the tissues and get to the front of the spine. These are the muscles along your right. spine. And we would go to the bones and disc. We would remove the disc and remove any of the spurs. And that operation is called a cervical fusion. Right. Another operation we do routinely is uh, from the back of the spine and we would uh, make an incision, multiple incisions, a large incision, and we would unroof the spine uh, along this area and unroof the spinal cord, or we would drill a small hole and just unroof a special nerve root. Okay. And that's called a laminectomy and or a laminectomy foramenotomy. Okay. And so we mainly treat issues from either the back with a, uh, an approach that doesn't address the disc and just opens the spinal canal. Sometimes we, we place screws and rods to hold it. Sometimes we just open it up. Or from the front, by removing the disc and locking it together. The uh, newer technologies have allowed us to work on through the front of the spine, which is how I would say the majority of issues are handled. And instead of fusing it, the spine together with a construct that locks it or knits it together, mm -hmm. we place a, a device that allows the spine to move. Okay, and uh, is that kind of bringing us to, uh, I guess uh, I made some notes here. Well, before we get to that, sure. it's the uh, Brian uh, cervical disc I want to talk about, but we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll lead right into it. Don't go away. We'll be right back. no matter their health care needs. From OB, to emergency room visits, rehabilitation, and everything in between. More people choose TGMC for life. Terrebonne General Medical Center. It all begins here. Dale Bourgeois. I was treated for prostate cancer by Maryburg Perkins Cancer Center at TGMC. My family doctor said that's where he would go if he had cancer. I'm very happy to recommend Maryburg Perkins Cancer Center at TGMC. Okay, uh, welcome back. A very interesting discussion. Uh, uh, doctor, but I, I guess, you know, from a layman's point of view, it just seems to me that, you know, if you do a fusion, it limits motion. Uh, what are there alternatives, I guess, in terms of uh, maybe being able to keep motion uh, as opposed to a fusion? Yes, sir. Well, that's um, an age old question in, in, in orthopedics is that for many years we learned to fuse joints together. Uh, in the 50s and 40s, 50s, 60s, we fused hips and knees. Today, no one has hip and knee fusions. They have artificial joints placed. The spine is a bit more complex and delicate, and it took us in, as orthopedic surgeons 50, 60 years to perfect hips and knees, and today, those hips and knees can last 
20, 30, 40, 50 years. Right. Most of the time, they last the lifetime of the patient. Spine surgery has lagged a bit behind for numerous reasons. Although the concepts were right in the past, we couldn't perfect the technology. So preservation of motion is what orthopedics is about. Keeping someone active, keeping someone moving, keeping someone in their normal scheme of life. This newer technology in spine surgery, artificial disc replacement, okay. allows people to have restoration of motion in the neck instead of a fusion with the same quick return, uh, with a quicker return to function and the same ability of pain relief. Okay, now uh, do you have, I think, in front of you maybe uh, something that shows the, uh, I don't know, uh, yeah, I know I you have some stuff there, can you, can you demonstrate? Happy to, I have a few models, and, and what I'll show here is, uh, if you may want to zoom in, this is, a, uh, uh, again, a spinal model. Okay, and, uh, there you go. This shows a plate on the front of this model with the disc behind it, and this is how we would fuse someone's neck, and this, this is at two separate levels uh, in the neck. This is a comparative device, uh, uh, the artificial disc. Okay. This specific artificial disc is made by Medtronic, one of the largest spine companies in the world. And uh, this disc, as you see, moves. So instead of that segment of the spine being rigid, it's able to move. So it restores the natural motion of the neck with an artificial device. Right, now that, that uh, let, me, let me just ask, because uh, you know, generally, you know, I see a lot of medical records, I guess, doing my practice and stuff. Uh, this must be some recent uh, advances in, 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 I guess, uh, spine surgery? Yes, sir. It, it's been a very recent advancement. Um, realistically, uh, when I finished training in uh, 2005 from a spine fellowship, the uh, hope was that we would be doing this every day, uh, uh, all week, and this would be the latest and greatest. Unfortunately, insurance companies r run uh, the show sometimes and we couldn't prove that it was a lot better just equal or a bit better and they basically um, Killed some of the momentum. I understand. We all know today that other forces are involved in healthcare other than doctors and patients and, and that's clearly unfortunate, but being as it may it took a while, but we finally have enough data to show that it's definitely better uh, the, the, the probably the best study is a four-year study comparing artificial disc to fusion and it was probably 85% good results to 72% good results. So it's not uh, milestones better, but right. it's clearly better. Sure. And um, the, the ability of us to, to do it reliably and safely is important because as doctors, we want to give the best care, but we want to give the newest uh, technology, but we, we got to prove that it's good enough for you. Okay, I believe we have a, a, a film, if I'm not mistaken, or uh, is that what we have, Jason? Yeah, tell us what we're looking at. Well, this is a, a, a shot of the Brian artificial disc, and it has uh, uh, two uh, domes on it, which are made of titanium, and it's porous coated, so it grows into the bone, and it has a, a polyurethane core, which is like a cutting board type material, with a plastic uh, a rim around it, and that keeps uh, saline or a solution inside, so no air bubbles develop, and the whole system is contained. Okay, very good. Uh, what I'd like to do, I think we're about to, yeah, that's the end of the, uh, of the film there. Uh, let me ask you, because we are kind of running uh, a little short on time, very interesting subject though, but who is actually a candidate for, uh, I guess, the artificial cervical disc? It's mainly uh, for people who have single level pathology, meaning they don't have four or five levels uh, uh, with problems, and they're usually a, a younger patient, 30s, 40s, 50s, somebody who can get a surgery one level and get back to life. Okay, very good. And uh, I guess, um, what are some indications that uh, may be present that might indicate this type of surgery? Severe neck pain with associated arm pain uh, or weakness. All right, and uh, let's see, who should avoid having cervical disc surgery? People with multi-level problems, people with diabetes, smokers, people with infection, people with chronic pain. And uh, what, I guess, what can patients expect after this surgery? The best part about this surgery is they can have an, a qu very quick return to function and they can return to their life faster, 
than with a fusion, which you are waiting for bones to heal and blocks of motion. Okay, and then uh, two things uh, after surgery, can people, uh, our patients I should say, uh, can they shower? And uh, what about driving after surgery? In Europe, they put this artificial disc in and people are playing professional sports in six weeks. Wow. So that porous coating allows for ingrowth from the bone and it's immediately locked in place. Because of the dome shape, there's no screws and it's compressed fit so people can immediately return to life. As soon as the scar is healed and the pain is gone from the surgery, they can have a normal return to function. All right, very good. Uh, we are out of time. Uh, on the, uh, we'll put up a graphic here, and uh, people can go ahead and call uh, either the hospital or the home orthopedic clinic on those numbers up there. I want to thank you very much for taking the time out to join us. Thank you, sir. And, and I definitely want to wish you a very happy birthday. <laughs> thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, it. good. We'll be right back. Stan Guava and sports.